Thank you very much, Ron. Good afternoon, everyone. I think as uh, Ron mentioned, uh, we have the dubious distinction of doing a presentation right after lunch, and so uh, that can be a bit challenging. But we really believe that uh, of, uh, of all of the topics that are on our agenda here for the next couple of days, this is one that I'm sure that all of you can relate to and probably uh, have your own introspections as to some of the things you're doing to probably uh, create those succession plans within your department. And uh, we really see this as an opportunity for two-way communication because we're really looking forward to, uh, to hearing some of your thoughts from the floor in terms of some of the things you're doing in your department to uh, address some of the issues that you'll hear us speak about today. And just uh, further elaborating on Ron's comments, I guess, and, and his observations with respect to the Toronto Fire Service, uh, setting the scene, if you will, for us in the Canadian Fire Service, uh, in particular, uh, you know, certainly looking at our demographics, we, have, we will be seeing an exodus of some of our most experienced and uh, most uh, knowledgeable individuals within our uh, organizations. We are going to uh, also, in terms of trying to find people that are going to be replacing them, uh, it, it's going to be more than, it's, it's, it's a daunting task. And certainly uh, the, what we'd like to do today is uh, first I'd like to set the scene in terms of what we see as the landscape uh, within uh, Canada and the United States and then hear some introspections uh, uh, from my colleagues both within Vancouver and, and also in terms of Austin, Texas as to what they're doing in terms of to address this issue. And I'm going to close off and speak to uh, some of the considerations that the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs are doing to try to uh, support the leadership of the Canadian Fire Service to try to minimize the impact of the exodus of having these talented individuals leave us. But certainly I think that we'd all agree that from a fire service perspective we do a fine job imparting those technical skills and knowledge to those that are uh, out there uh, working on our behalf and serving our citizens. And quite often in terms of from a leadership development perspective we are sometimes uh, certainly uh, challenged in terms of finding the right fit in terms of program development. But I'll just put this to you and maybe does this resonate with you and, and the organization that you're working in, but we're we're certainly looking for those individuals who aspire to be chief officers and those that are currently chief officers, those who, who aspire to be the chief of the department. But when you think of some of the considerations of the environment by, by, by which we're working in today, in terms of life-work balance, for many organizations it's, it's uh, quite, a, uh, it's quite a, an imbalance, if you will. Certainly there's a significant workload for all of our chief officers at any areas within our departments and unlike, and I say this uh, very positively, I, I look at the police service and, and uh, the tremendous support staff that they have in carrying out their mandate and often many of our chief officers who have responsibilities for a particular area are really an army of one. Um, I also think in terms of uh, there's a general lack of appreciation and sometimes respect for the, the significant workload and the important work that's undertaken by our chief officers, you know, throughout our entire organizations. And sometimes that lack of understanding.